better, isn't it? It's like an orchard on the boat. Here's next year's news. Burma, a few years ago, led the world in the in the presentation of happiness to its population. Because nothing ever happens in Burma, no one makes anything, no one's got a job and everyone's really, really miserable. They took up the Buddhist conception of happiness and created a, a brand new kind of way of measuring what happens in Burma, called literally gross domestic happiness. Copying the idea here in Britain, the uh -huh. Office of National Statistics, this is what it says as it launches its consultation process into what makes us happy and what we think gives us well-being. I'm going to read this out. This is a quote. A yardstick to measure happiness. The ONS is consulting with people, organisations and businesses across the UK in an effort to develop and measure the nation's well-being. The aim is that these new measures will cover the quality of life of people in the UK, environmentally and stability issues, as well as economic performance of the country. Some of the factors that we already know affect national well-being include, and here's a list of nine things, income and wealth, job satisfaction and economic security, ability to have a say on local and national issues, having good connections with friends and relatives, present and future conditions of the environment, crime, health, education and training, and personal and cultural activities, including caring and volunteering. Those nine things, as far as I can make out, cover every possible conceivable thing you can possibly do in this society. There isn't almost anything that they've left out. They've pretty much covered it all with personal and cultural activities. But the ability to have a say in local and national issues. This is from a government that nobody voted for. So, kicking off... Sorry, is that the Burmese government? <laughs> no heckling, no Sorry. heckling, no heckling. Nobody voted for that government either. Right, thanks. January sees the launch of their new localism <laughs> policies. What this amounts to is that these brand new bodies are going to be set up locally. Uh, they're completely unelected and they have no money or ability to raise money. So they can't actually do anything. Right? This is, this is their answer. So if you're feeling that the walls of your life are crumbling around you, you'll think, oh my goodness, at least I can take part in a local consultation exercise. What the Office of National Statistics is doing as well it's because it knows these things that cover every aspect of human life as we know it. Um, they're asking for other things that you might think ought to be done. And you can go and be consulted by the, by the Office of National Statistics. It takes 10 minutes and what they really do is they ask you which order you put these different nine things in. You go from one place to another and it gives you a different order to put those different things in to see if you're more worried about crime or worried about local representation or more worried about personal and cultural activities including caring and volunteering. So January. More WikiLeaks. That's going to be in the news. Um, they're also going to be deciding not to send out all the alerts to public sector workers who are going to be sacked by summer until after Christmas. That's nice, isn't it? So that's <laughs> what they're going to do in January. In January, 250,000 people, according to many estimates, are going to get your fire by summer. February, more wicked weeks, obviously. That, I might as well just say that comes up every single month for the rest of the year. More wicked weeks. And the other one is the war escalates. And we're supposed to be calling out next year, but no, the war will escalate in, in every respect. It's my prediction that um, Assange, although he's been released tonight, he will be sent to a Swedish jail from which he will disappear. And then he's going to turn up, um, I think, making tweets from Guantanamo Bay. He's going to be talking about who he's sharing his soul with and possibly saying his there's been a violation of his sexual integrity. We'll have to wait. By March, that's the end of the financial year. It's also the end of Plan A for the economy. Plan B isn't going to look too good. Plan C, D and Plan 9 from outflip and space is not going to look too good by this point. I don't think. By this time we'll be officially in double dip recession. Okay? That's my prediction. In fact, it'll be a bit of a, a bigger dip than they say. April. 
the Office of National Statistics consultation finishes, by which time we'll know everything there is possible to know about happiness and well-being. There's going to be the wedding of the year. No, not the royals. Liz Hurley and Shane Warne. That's my prediction. Oh, oh yeah, Shane, Shane, Shane. Roy and Strain Shane. <laughs> I predict him right. I say that for every month as well. So we're wicked against the war. I predict him right. I predict him right. I actually do predict him right. Yes. <laughs> May. The coalition is going to be one year old. But it's not any longer going to be a coalition of the Lib Dems and the Tories. The Tories will be there, but the Lib Dems will be split up, I believe, in probably something like in, in sort of factions. Probably including the Popular Front for Democracy of the People and the People's Popular Front for Democracy, obviously. More WikiLeaks, more Raya, okay? June, the countdown to the last year before the Olympics begins. It's the end of the it's the end of the academic year, but all the exam results are going to be avoided because Julian Assange will have released all the questions earlier. <laughs> <laughs> July. All the students will be out then. More youth unemployed to actually swell the general unemployment that's been already added to with all the public sector workers. It's what I predict the hottest heat wave on record. And that's going to mean that the writing teachers, health workers, students, council workers are going to welcome the new water cannons that are going to be. <laughs> August. August is not got any money or a job. So holidays at home are going to be the most popular they've ever been since the Gordian times. <laughs> but then the coldest autumn on record means a huge surge in cheap airplane tickets. And then of course it's war, riot, the courts, it goes on. In September, the academic year is going to fail to start because all those well-heeled rich students that turn up from there to their colleges will suddenly find all their lecturers have been replaced by coin-operated um, Wikipedia machines. <laughs> October. Finally, the results of the Office of National Statistics consultation on happiness will be released. And I believe that they'll discover that we live, really, in the best of all possible worlds. <laughs> Officials, I think, must probably ignore the growing signs of a triple dip recession. And uh, they'll concentrate on the well-being tables where we'll probably find that we still lag well behind Burma. <laughs> November. Hopes of normal economic recovery end with what comes to be known as just basically the big dipper. Where we just keep on dipping. War, Wikileaks, all of those fire. The recession though will probably be confined to England, Ireland and Wales because I believe that Scotland will at this time try to secede from the United Kingdom and it's going to form the North Atlantic time zone pact of the Scandinavian countries in Iceland. December, we invade Scotland and we all feel much, much better. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely.